let's add a user interface. We're going to do the HUD now, so that way when we add things like the keys and the coins and collectible items, that we'll have somewhere to display them. There's a couple of different ways we can do this. Uh, the first one, and the one that I would not recommend for this tutorial, is using the built-in UI nodes, like widgets and canvases and all this kind of stuff. And the simple reason is, is just because it's more difficult to use than I actually think it's worth. It'll be its own tutorial and hopefully it gets improved in the future. The method we're going to use is, let's go 7 on the numpad, and we're just going to do the old-fashioned put the UI out in the world somewhere. We'll put our cursor here, do a camera, go into the camera, uh, zoom it out, and then set this camera to orthographic scale. Set this to 20 so we get a nice wide uh, canvas. Then let's just put down some planes so that we can see where our stuff is going to be. For this game, I'm going to do kind of a heart container system, something like that. So we'll just do this to represent it for now. Then let's select this and add in text. And we'll call this, we'll just use like a zero or something. You can adjust the different alignments and stuff for your text in the text properties. So I like to center my text, so center and middle. And then we'll just move this over here. So this will be our coins. And then we'll have another one, and this one will be for our keys. So different keys that you'll be able to collect. Now let's click on the camera and F2. We're gonna call this camera HUD. And we're going to select the camera and all of the parts that we're gonna have attached to our HUD. Press M, new collection, and we wanna call this collection HUD. Then another thing that we wanna do is select the letters, go to material, new material, and we're going to set this material to emission. That way, it is never going to be unlit. We also want to do that for our stand-in heart containers. So we'll just do a red color. Let's just do emission, and we'll make it red. And this will be an example for our coins. And then this one will be our keys. We'll do a bluish gray for the keys. So now what we're going to do is click on our player camera. You can click, it up, click on it in the hierarchy. And then press Control and 0 to go directly back into that camera. Now with this camera selected, let's go to the Logic Brick Editor, and for this reason, there's just more overlay options and stuff like that in the Logic Bricks. So with the camera selected, we're going to add an Always, and we're going to add a Collection. Connect these together, and we want to add Overlay Collection. Then the camera we want to have selected is our HUD, so our HUD camera, and the collection we want is HUD as well. When we play the game, you'll see that we have a nice HUD. There is a downside to doing it this method, or doing this method. If you want to do menus and things like that, uh, you will not be able to have your HUD open and have your menus at the same time. You can only have one overlay collection active at a time, otherwise you'll get a bunch of errors and it'll kill your performance, if not crash the game entirely. A way to get around that is to just put the text in front of the screen. It's not pretty, it's kind of sucks, <laughs> but that is a method. And then you can just toggle the collection on and off. And we will go into this method later when we add our escape menu. So we'll be done with HUD for now. Next on the agenda is going to be collectible items. Let's go into the layout tab and add a coin into the scene. How's it going? Future Locks here. I just realized I did a terrible job recording the coin segment of this video, so I'm going to redo it. Let's go to the Logic Brick section. So what we want to do is make it so when we collide with the coin, it's going to add one coin to our counter. Let's start by adding a collision, and we'll just make it so when it collides with the player. Then we're going to end the object. We'll just end object. So simple enough, if we press play and we run into the coin, it'll delete the coin. So now we need to tell our coin counter when we grab a coin. Let's go to the coin and add a message. We're going to connect the collision to the message and we're going to call this add coin. We're going to add a new text property, make this a integer, and we want to add a message. This message is add coin and we're going to add a property. Connect the message to the property and we want to set this to add. We want to add the property text and we're going to add this one. If you want to subtract something from your counter, you just have to do negative one. But one's going to be good for us. Let's click on our coin again, make sure that everything is spelled correctly. Awesome. And when we press play, we can see our coin counter. When we grab the coin, it adds one to our coin count. So that's pretty easy, but let's make it so this coin actually rotates. So we'll do a always, and we're going to do a motion. Connect the motion to the always, and then on the z-axis, make it rotate about two degrees. So when we press play, we can see our coin now rotates. Let's add this coin to a collection. Press M, add a new collection, and we'll call it 
coin. I'm going to call it new coin because I am redoing this. And we're going to go to this collection, hide everything in that collection, and add a collection instance. Now just select new coin or coin for you. Object, transform origin to center of volume. And then we'll just set it back to this position. We can put a bunch of coins all over the scene now. So when we press play, we can go and collect all of our coins. And that's going to be it for the coin section. All right, so let's do the same thing, but let's do it for the key. Let's add a new collection just preemptively, and we're going to call this key. And we're going to add in our key object. Let's go to our layout, find the key in the objects. So we got key, add it to the game. It is very small. Make this bigger, scale up. So now there's our key. Going back to the logic bricks, we're just going to do this the same way we did the coin. In fact, click on the key, then click on the coin, press F3 and copy logic bricks because we're going to be using the exact same logic for the key as we did the coins. And with the key, we also want to set the message to add key instead of add coin. So add key, then click on our HUD camera, go to the text for our keys. Then we'll add a text game property again, make this an integer, and we'll just do the same thing we did before. Click on our text and then click on the text that we already had working, copy logic bricks. There we go. And for our key, we'll just change the message to add key. Click on the key and where it says to send to, we're going to add our other text. So currently this text is over here. We're going to call this key counter so we can find it easier. Then click on the key, go to the to section of the message and type in key counter. Now when we press play and we grab our key, we can see that it is added to our count. Now we can collect coins and keys. Now that we have the coins, the keys, and the counters working, let's add a health system. So we have our basic little heart containers here, and let's just make it so these go up and down properly. So what we want to do is kind of Zelda style or any other game that uses heart containers, basically. And we're just going to say when the character takes damage, then we're just going to remove one of these. And then when you pick up a health container or something, in fact, we'll have to add a health item to the game then it will go back up. So we'll have a max and a minimum. Let's go back to logic nodes. Going back to the player health script that we made earlier, click on that, take this and control J to make a frame. And then we'll just press F2 and call this uh, respawn. Before we add any code, press F2 and let's name these. We'll do heart three, control V, heart two, and heart one. Now that we have them all named, I'm just gonna do three heart containers for this game, for this example. And let's add a visibility and we'll have a evaluate property. And what we're going to want to do is actually go and find our property. So let's click on the player, player object, go to our properties, add a game property and call this HP or whatever. Call this HP. Let's make it an integer, give it three. HP is three. Then we'll say if true and we want self HP integer is equal to three then set visibility and we're going to chain these together. Uh, so select this and we'll say visible on all of them. So if HP is equal to three, click on heart container one, heart container two, and heart container three. Then let's click on this, duplicate these, and we'll say if it's equal to two, then heart container three is not gonna be visible and duplicate it again. And if this is equal to one, then only one heart container will be visible. And if it's equal to zero, then you are dead and no heart containers are visible. So now if we press play, you can see we have three heart containers. I'm going to just go into the properties, go down to two. Now we have two heart containers. If I go down to one, we have one heart container. And then if we go down to zero, we are dead and we have no heart containers like so. Let's make this three. And if you want to make it a little bit prettier and make a little frame for these, we'll click on it, one of the heart containers and then add in a new plane. Let's bring it down to an orthographic scale so it won't really matter. And then just duplicate these. So go over to this little icon here and click individual origins, then extrude, scale. So we'll make a little bit of a frame like so, and then delete faces. And then make sure to delete both sides because we extruded like so. And that will give us a frame. If we go into our properties, go new, make this an emission and then make it black. Now we have an empty heart container. Now what we'll do is to make this cleaner, control J, give it a frame, F2, call this health. 
and you can make this as big as you want <laughs> just depending on how many nodes you have I'm sure there's a better way this is just the simplest way I could think of of doing this and let's make a real life application go to our player health and we'll extend this a little bit so we'll go modify property add this to our frame when colliding actually we'll just uh, connect this done socket to the set position to our game property select self and then HP and we're just going to subtract one now every time we fall in the water and respawn we'll collect our items fall in the water respawn and we lose health every time we respawn kind of Zelda style <laughs>